this is uh, dr rajesh tere and thanks for kind introduction by i thank pli for providing me this opportunity now today's topic basically was with the medical negligence along with the rights of the stu uh, patients rights of the doctors and what are the various litigations faced for these doctors and i will just go in brief what is negligence you can just see lack of reasonable care and skill or willful negligence of a medical practitioner treatment of a patient which results into bodily injury or death or in short if we say what is negligence is doing something that one is not supposed to do or failing to do something which one is supposed to do so this is such a simple concept i would say that negligence is just lack of application of your reasonable care and skill if it is in the context of a medical profession we would say it is lack of application of reasonable care and reasonable skill by any registered medical practitioner while treating his or her patient which has to result or which may result in some bodily injury or sometime death so this is we can easily understand what is negligence and negligence per se or professional negligence everything is one and say the second part what we said is doing something which is not supposed to do and failing to do something which one should do so this this uh, defines uh, what is a negligence now uh, there are various aspects in which we can say what is uh, the act of omission and what is the act of commission now what is act of omission is a simple word is that we omit something now in if we relate that with the medical field it states that not doing something that a reasonable man under the circumstances would do and what is act of commission doing something which a reasonable prudent man under the circumstances would not do so we'll take various examples once we discuss with the basics of negligence their way various types of negligence we'll discuss it is just act of omission and commission is applicable in law also if we refer ipc 201 and 202 uh, it relates with this act of omission and the commission now what is professional mar praxis now we have we have discussed about the negligence it says that lack of reasonable care or lack of reasonable skill or one should not do anything which one should do or one is not doing anything which one should do now what professional mal praxis means it is the due care it is the breach of standard care occurs either by commission or omission that we have discussed now how it can be applied say a physician fails to comply with the standard of care as when he improperly that is unjustifiably deviates from accepted practices i will give you the best example in this that we take a common procedure or a common act which is performed or which is regularly done by a doctor is giving some intramuscular injection now there is a accepted practice if you want to give in the upper limb it has to be the upper one third part lateral part of the deltoid or if we want to give in the uh, the gluteus region it is again the upper upper zone one third zone now the accepted practice is that we have to have a disposable syringes along with that we have to inject in this part only now if any doctor or a medical man deviates from this then we can say it is an act of omission or commission secondly when he employs accepted practices but does so unskillfully we'll take same example that a medical man has a, he is doing an accepted practices he is giving in the proper deltoid region he has a disposable syringes with him but now to do an intramuscular injection any medical man has to inject that needle in a tangential manner inside the muscular layer now if while inserting this injection if we does is unskillfully means sometimes you hear from a patient that doctor has injected some uh, this uh, intramuscular injection in some other direction or it is not uh, in the uh, 
uh, we can say the right direction which has to be put into the muscle. So this both reflects the lack of having a due care or what we can say, it is a breach of standard of care. Now on right hand side, we have just give, give you a cartoon like presentation in which uh, what say what the doctor says, I see you studied medicine at Harvard, but I am self-taught. Now this is where there can be a breach of standard of care, either by act of omission or act of commission, which results into professional malpraxis. Now let us come on, what are the privileges of registered medical practitioner? Now what is a registered medical practitioner? Under Indian Medical Council Act, now which has been reconstituted and reframed as National Medical Commission, it envises or it gives some rights to registered medical practitioner or a doctor, it, it is right to choose a patient. That means any doctor has a right to choose a patient. Means if any doctor, uh, if any of the patient is coming to the OPD and if doctor feels that he will not treat this patient, then he has every right to choose his patient. Now, exception to this is that if there is an emergency, then he has to give basic medical care or first aid as per the Honorable Supreme Court order. So that is only the exception to this. Second is right to use title and description of qualification of name, which we can see every the, the boards of the hospitals, the OPDs, the general practitioner boards will have his or her name with qualification and description of his uh, the quality or what, what skills he possess, just like uh, most of the doctors write family physician and surgeon, or if he's a surgeon, MS in general surgery, he may write, he is a surgeon, laparoscopic surgeon, and so on and so forth. He has right to do so. Then he has right to practice medicine also. Now, right to practice medicine again, there is a Supreme Court order in which it says that one should practice its medicine. For example, now there are various paths of medicine, just like a uh, MBBS doctor is a allopathic doctor, a BMS doctor is an Ayurvedic doctor, a BHMS doctor is an homeopathic doctor, a Unani doctor is uh, related to Unati, Unani expertises. In this, one of the Supreme Court order has clearly indicated that even though any registered medical practitioner has a right to practice medicine, but he should practice his own pathy means what he has been graduated into. Fourth one is right to dispense medicine to the patient. You can see in any daycare unit or the, the general practitioner where people go, usually he will dispense some medicine from his side and he may give some prescription for the medicines which he may not possess with his clinic. Fifth one is right to possess and supply dangerous drug to his patient. There is something Schedule H drug, uh, which is labeled under FDA or the nomenclature of the Pharmacy Act, in which uh, some drugs are labeled as dangerous drug, which he has right to give it to the patient as the condition arises. Then the right to give an evidence as an expert witness in the court of law. Now this, all the lawyers are well aware of this. Uh, any doctor, any doctor, any registered medical practitioner is an expert witness as per Indian Evidence Act of 45 that he can depose in the court of law as an expert witness as and when required by the Honorable Court. Seventh one is right to issue medical certificate. Now, this right has to be exercised by that registered medical practitioner only when he examines XYZ patient or any patient. I will discuss one recent uh, punishment given by Tamil Nadu Medical Council based on the uh, the High Court of the Madras High Court order latter that we have a right undoubtedly, but we we should only issue to medical certificate to all those patients which are examined by him. Then they have right to recovery of his professional fees. Means we have right to ask fee from our patient if we are in private setup only. If you are doing job in the government 
or semi government setup like municipal corporation of greater mumbai they are these doctors or registered medical practitioners are paid by the employer in that case they have no right to recovery of his or her fees from that patient then is right for appointment in public and local hospital that is that we all are aware any registered medical practitioner can apply to any of the public and the local hospital for jobs now along with this we should also know what are the rights of the patient many a time either the patients are ignorant of their rights or maybe even though the patient possesses this right the doctors or the registered medical practitioners are denying of their right so what are the basic rights of any patient is a choice of a doctor that means no registered medical practitioner can make compulsion to any of the patient to choose any type of doctor now in this you may say some some of you may feel that many the general practitioners or the consultant even refer to xyz patient so that is only an advice given to the patient it is not binding on them for example if any patient comes to a general practitioner or the local practitioner of that area he may refer that patient based on the requirement to as ms surgeon md medicine pediatrician ophthalmologist that should not be perceived by the patient that it was compulsion on the patient it is just an advice given to the patient that you go to this patient, uh, doctor as you have this ailments with you and he may be in a better position to further manage uh, to your disease or ailment but even though any registered medical practitioner refers to any consultant if the patient feel that he should approach another type of same category of the consultant he is free to do so second right is access to healthcare without discrimination now this is again one of the fundamental right of any citizen of our country he may or may not be a doctor that we have access to healthcare without discrimination that means if any of the patient he may be of any caste creed poor rich if he approaches a doctor he should not be discriminated to provide healthcare based on his all these factor then the patient should be treated with dignity he has that fundamental right as a citizen of this country to be treated with dignity then he should have a privacy that means whatever information say privacy and confidentiality is something one and the same or interrelated whatever information the registered medical practitioner or doctor derives from by way of examination of any patient that should be kept private private means in between doctor and patient and it should be confidential now some may feel why the doctor should not inform the legal heirs of the patient or the near relatives yes if that condition is under something we have a privileged communication in which after examination of your patient if the doctor feels this is an infectious disease and it may spread to the relatives or the nearby neighbors then in that case doctor can breach this privacy and confidentiality of the patient then seeking information seeking information means what if any patient is admitted or treated by any doctor if the patient asks that i want all the indoor papers or the information of my treatment provided by you then he has right to seek information and as per the indian medical council act that is the indian ethics and regulation act we have to provide all this information to the patient then the safety of the patient he has that right that whenever he approaches any doctor he should be provided due safety in the premises of any healthcare institution then he has a right to refusal that means take an example in which uh, if any patient approaches to a doctor and after examination of that patient that doctor may refer or may give some medicine and ask that patient to take that medicine now it is the sole right of the patient 
whether to take that medicine or not. He has every right to refuse that treatment if he feels that the, the treatment provided by the doctor or the advice given by the doctor is not proper or it is improper. Then second opinion, he has every right to take second opinion from any other doctor, even though he has been treated by first doctor and the treatment is undergoing from the first examining doctor. If he feels he can approach to any other doctor for second opinion, then he has a right of getting and records. This we have discussed. Then he has right of continuity. What do you mean by continuity is that say day one, that doctor examines that patient and he may advise or prescribe some medicines. And then he may say that after 10 days, 15 days, eight days, you may please come and uh, again uh, look with me that we'll recheck you or we'll re-examine you. So he has a right of that continuity. If he again approaches the same doctor for second examination, that doctor should examine. That means the patient has a right of continuity. Then he should have, he has a right of comfort. Means every a clinic, hospital or maternity homes should provide adequate comfort to that patient. Then he has a right of complaint. This is very important nowadays or after enactment of Consumer Protection Act that is in 1990, 96 uh, as per the order of Honorable Kerala High Court that this every patient examined by any doctor has a right of complaint to that doctor also to the police station also, to the consumer courts also, to the civil courts also, or to any competent authority he or she feels appropriate. Then he has a right of compensation. Same we have discussed, he can approach the consumer redressal forums for compensation. Now something, uh, the topic uh, which was provided to me uh, also mentions of a consent. What is a consent basically? See, we, you all, most of you all are a law students or maybe lawyers. Consent is nothing but a contract between two people in legal term. Now, we, if we apply in the medical sense of, for practicing the medical profession, what it says, consent can be given by any person who is conscious, mentally sound, and about well years of age as provided under various sections that it IPC 88, 9, and 90 of Indian Penal Code Act 1860. So a consent is only valid when it is taken about 12, 12 years of age, that patient should be conscious, mentally sound, and uh, uh, it should be given voluntarily also. This is a contract act, so it should be given voluntarily also. Now, when, when consent is not valid, consent when given under fear, fraud, or mispresentation of the fact or by a person who is mentally unsound or who is under 12 years of age, if consent is taken under these circumstances, that consent stands invalid. Now, these are basic types of consent we all should know implied. I will give a basic example in this. Any patient going directly to the OPD of any of the medical practitioner, that is the implied consent Means in that case, the doctor need not to ask him, uh, are you providing consent for examination? If he himself or herself approaches to any doctor, that means he has given an implied consent to that registered medical practitioner. The second type of consent is an expressed consent. What is that? Anything other than implied consent is expressed consent. Means rather than this implied consent, everything falls under the category of express consent. Now, what it say, this express consent may be either oral or written. Express oral consent is obtained for relatively minor examination or therapeutic procedure. For example, uh, we'll give you, again, we'll discuss of giving an intramuscular injection. So if you have gone to any doctor before giving this minor procedure, he will verbally ask you he pay, whatever the patient's name would be that I am going to give you an intramuscular injection. Is it okay with you? Now, if the patient nods or says, yes, I have no problem. So that is an oral expressed 
consent. Now the written consent would be that all information in that explained in a comprehensible non-medical term, preferably in local language about the diagnosis, nature of treatment, risk involved, prospects of suspects and prognosis. What do you mean by this informed written consent is that this consent is taken for all major procedure. That is to say you do angiography, you do appendicectomy, you do all major procedures. Now in that, the constituents of informed consent is that we as a doctor should explain him what is the diagnosis, what is the nature of treatment, what is the risk involved in that, what are the prospectus of su success of the treatment. This most of the time, you know, doctor fails to inform their patient that what is the success rate of uh, this procedure or operation, what we are going to perform on you. And then we should also explain as a doctor, what is the prognosis of that procedure or the act, what he is going to do on the patient. So informed consent, which is written, is basically for all major procedure. Now there is something called as a proxy consent. What is proxy consent? All about type of consent can take the shape of proxy consent. Now what is that parent for child? Means or if we, we are taking, we are treating some child, say less than uh, 12 years of age, then we can take a, some called as a proxy consent from the legal heir of that child that is a parent. If parent is not available, then close relative. Or for mentally unsound patient, what we do as per law or the, uh, the administrative procedures of hospital, if any mentally unsound patient is brought for examination or if he comes for examination and he or she does not have any legal heir with him or her, then the hospital administrator of that clinic, of that hospital has to provide consent to such mentally uh, unsound patients. Now, uh, we'll discuss one of the landmark judgment for informed consent. So that is Samira Kohli versus Dr. Prabhu Manchandana and others. This is one of the landmark judgments. It says that the court held that consent given for diagnostic and operating laparoscopy does not consent for total hysterectomy with bilateral salpingiofrac. Now, where we can relate such uh, landmark judgment is that many a time we all have seen that. Now, if any patient is taken on operation table, uh, this is one of the examples that say laparoscopy or any diagnostic procedure, just like endoscopy we are doing, we are doing angiography, that is again a diagnostic procedure. Now for that, that doctor takes and consent, saying that this, this procedure is to be done, express consent is taken, express written consent is taken. Now sometimes, once he does an, uh, say, diagnostic laparoscopy or such procedure, he may feel that now we should immediately go for some operative mode, just like this in this case, they went for total hysterectomy with bilateral salpingo-ufrectomy. salpingo is means complete removal of his, uh, uterus of that female along with both the ovaries and the connecting duct of the ovaries with the uterus. So what doctor has done in this, that doctor has taken consent only for laparoscopy and for diagnostic procedure. But after doing the diagnostic procedure, he felt that now it is a fit case for total hysterectomy with bilateral salpingiofrectomy. He did that, but he failed to take a consent that is the express consent for total hysterectomy with bilateral salpingiofrectomy. So that is where the court has said that you, we can read that the patient was a sane adult. There was no question of someone else giving a consent on her behalf. The appellant was under anesthesia, thus unconscious, and there was no urgency in this case. The respondent, that is the doctor, should have waited till they appealed. Appellant regained consciousness. Then he should have taken, the doctor should have taken a proper express consent for total hysterectomy. The question of taking the patient mother's consent does not arise in the absence of emergency. What court has said categorically in this, uh, even though you take a legal air consent in such cases, it should not arise if that operation which we are going to do is a planned operation. So sometimes doctors, what they do, the patient is on the operation table, 
and they want to do some further operative procedure the a junior doctor or sister may come out of operation theater talk with mother father or the legal heir of that patient and request them to take and say consent that we are doing this further operation which was not discussed with you and mother or father may give also a consent but that consent we is not valid in such circumstances then what court has said the issue was not about the accuracy of removing reproductive organs but the failure to obtain consent for removing the reproductive organs as performing surgery without taking consent amounts to an unauthorized intrusion and interference with the appellant body so honorable supreme court has said that without taking a proper separate express consent for such further procedure it amount to to unauthorized intrusion it is just like trespassing there is you know law which says trespassing in someone's property it is same equivalent to that that is unauthorized intrusion and interference with the appellant body so what court has said the respondent was restrained from paying the surgery fee wholly but directed to pay only the compensation of unauthorized surgery this was the ruling of the honorable supreme court in regarding this case so this this much care has to be taken by a registered medical practitioner while taking a consent now who can file a complaint a patient can file a complaint undoubtedly because damages have occurred on that patient now if a patient uh, may not file a complaint yes some attendant some relative rightly or wrongly thinks that there has been a criminal negligence by the treating doctor in his or her relative treatment causing simple or grievous injury or even death then all of this can also file a complaint it is not mandatory as per law that only the patient has to complaint regarding the uh, alleged negligence against any doctor on his behalf an attendant or relative can also uh, file a complaint now what is that if cognizable means if that complaint is cognizable the act is cognizable then fir in police station have in jurisdiction over the place of treatment is done and in these cases no warrant is required for any arrest of a doctor if it is non cognizable yes warrant is required complaint directly in the court of judicial magistrate can be done if cognizable but police refuses to take a complaint from that complainant then the patient or the relatives or the complainant can always approach the judicial magistrate magistrate for some directives in such matters now these are some sections related with simple injury 337 grievous 338 if there is a death say 304 a ipc now in grievous injury along with this we can apply 320 ipc also in this now where this patient complaint can be filed now these are some pictorial presentation of medical lawsuit in which it can be done say doctor errors pharmaceutical lawsuits medical negligence medical incompetence incompetence also legal lawsuits medical justice substandard healthcare malpractice settlement and medical malpractice in all these medical problems a lawsuit can be filed by a patient he is on his behalf by any attendant or relatives now where he can file that complaint he can file that complaint either as in civil lawsuit in the civil courts either in the consumer lawsuit now consumer and civil lawsuits are different courts now this consumer they are not the actual courts they are redressal forum or the special courts we can say where compensation is awarded to the complainant based on the merit of the case then the criminal lawsuit in the criminal court now this these three areas a patient or is on his behalf any of the relatives can file a complaint now guidelines provided by supreme court for criminal cases the the most landmark judgment was in 2005 that is jacob matthews versus a uh, state of punjab i it was a three bench judgment that is the three supreme court honorable supreme court presided bench and judgment and this judgment changed the procedure completely for arrest of any doctor for the investigation of any doctor in alleged negligence case 
what it says private complaint cannot be entertained unless the complainant has produced prima facie evidence before the court in the form of credible opinion given by another doctor to support the charges of rashness or negligence now before 2005 what used to happen a patient or on behalf of the patient may go to the nearest police station and file a fir against the treating doctor uh, and the police used to take an fir and proceed for the what we can say uh, arrest of the doctor Uh, if the patient dies under ipc 304a or if there are damages like simple or grievous injury now after jacob medew's guideline no one can entertain any private complaint unless and until it is supported by any doctor opinion and that opinion has to be credible opinion uh, it's not that you go to any of your pehchan ka doctor or known doctor and he will give some writing no no i have examined this opinion and i feel that the doctor is negligent or uh, he, he has been rash in treating this patient no it has to be a credible opinion only now recently there are some guidelines given for protection of doctor from frivolous prosecution against medical negligence now one of the survey has said that whatever the complaint or are been against the medical profession more than 70% cases were frivolous or we can say they were not justified or they were untrue so for that the national medical commission under government of india has given some guidelines for protection of doctor against sense prosecution what it says it took into consideration of jack matthews we as the state of punjab again while framing this guideline they also took into consideration the modified case or the modified version verdict of lalita kumari versus state of up 2013 now based on these two landmark judgment there are some guidelines given by national medical commission for protection of doctor now in in that the gist of that uh, recommendations or guidelines is that the preliminary inquiry has to be conducted by the concerned investigating agency and which should be time bound what should be the time they have said that the time bound preliminary inquiry done by any investigating agency should not exceed 15 days generally and in some exceptional cases uh, it can further go more than 15 days but it should be reflected in general diary entry what do you mean by the general diary entry we all know all the police station has an police diary entry and they have to make entry of each and every activity regarding the investigation done by that concerned officer then prosecution of or investigation agency on receipt of complaint prior to make a arrest refers the complaint to district medical council board as per these guidelines they have asked each of the state government to form a district medical board for this then the district government board should be in the government medical college mc is medical college if some districts may not have a medical college then the civil hospitals or the district hospital a board has to be formed for providing such opinion then what it said if there are medical colleges government medical college just like we have in mumbai in pune multiple districts have in that the department of fmt that is our department forensic medicine and toxicology should be the nodal department of this board then what it says dmcb examines the complaint in two weeks that is the district medical control board should examine the complaint in two weeks from its received that is 15 days and forward it recommendation to the investigating agencies now what investigation agency should do further they should now this opinion given by the district medical board if the investigating agencies or doctors are not satisfied with the recommendation of this board they have an provision for appeal stating the reasons to state medical board so every state will have now a state medical board now if any opinion provided by district medical board or any medical college is not 
satisfactory to the investigating agency or the doctor against whom the complaint has been proceeded they can appeal but they should appeal with some justification to the state medical board within 2 weeks from the receipt of the opinion of district medical board so it is a time bound we can say there are limitations for appealing that is 2 weeks now state medical board from the pool of specialist for that subject that subject means if that complaint of alleged negligence is related with is related against some surgeon for operating some operation then this state medical board should randomly select a doctor who has to be a surgeon only and minimum two specialists from the concerned branch branch means medicine surgery gynec on the day of receipt of appeal or complaint now this state medical board within two weeks should examine that case and state the reason for either endorsing or rejecting the recommendation means this state medical board may accept the opinion of the district medical board as it is or they may give some changes in that also or they may deny completely also but if they deny partly or completely this state medical board has to give a justified reasoning for that they cannot blindly deny that we do not agree now now after receiving the recommendation of district medical board or state medical board investigation agency should proceed as per law means they can file a fir against that treating doctor if death has occurred under 304 a ipc and they can make an arrest go in front of the honorable court and the proceedings can be started now see this this national medical council based on various judgment has given a clear cut directives to all the state government to all the investigating agencies what is the manner in which you should go for investigation against any doctor then we'll go in brief about what is medical negligence now this medical negligence has been defined under uh, some we can say black law dictionary and now it says to establish medical negligence what is required uh, we can say in brief you can say there, there is requirement of four d's if these four d's are satisfied by the complainant then medical negligence can be proved against any doctor what is that four days first is duty means the complainant should prove that the doctor has a duty to me for treating me second is dereliction of the duty that means even after treating me he has not given his duty based on the applicable standard of medical care and application of reasonable skill then third there has to be a damage for that patient he cannot just alleged negligence without any damage uh, caused because of that treatment means you can't just blindly go and uh, the patient should not go to any police station and say mujhe lag raha hai ki negligence hai doctor ka isliye i am complaining so there has to be a damage or damages on that patient as a result of that treatment then the fourth d is that there should be direct causation that means whatever damages are claimed by the patient on his or her body should have a direct link with the treatment provided by that doctor means uh, say uh, you take an example now if any surgeon has operated say appendicectomy that is a common procedure now after operation ha huh, everything is okay patient is discharged and say after one month uh, the patient is that same patient is complaining that he has pain in abdomen on say left side of the abdomen with some other cause and then he will go and complain because of that operation of appendix uh, that has resulted in this damage so that cannot be agreed by the uh, that cannot be a base to sustain medical negligence based on direct causation so if this four days are proved by the complainant then undoubtedly that medical doctor can be booked under ipc 304a now this civil courts and criminal courts what is civil negligence we all know act on the part of treating physicians which causes some suffering harm or damage to the patient that means it are these are all minor harms or damages to the patient damage is such which can be compensated by money so all this damage or harm or suffering on the patient as a result of treating that patient should be compensated by money now legal punishment 
in the civil negligence cannot be awarded by that civil courts now some case laws now see this we have discussed regarding providing the medical certificate that is a right of a doctor now what this tamil nadu case law of carelessness in tamil nadu then recent uh, punishment given to one doctor medical council of the tamil nadu suspends government doctor for one week over carelessness in issuing certificate to patient now what doctor has done the what doctor that has done is he issued certificate months after checking him only once that means uh, you know ex doctor has examined y patient now immediately after that he should have issued that certificate that is yes, ex ex patient was examined by me on this day this date this is my provisional diagnosis and for this treating this case say i have advised two days three days five days whatever is appropriate the rest for that patient but in this case that doctor has issued certificate months after checking him only once he has checked and in, and is given the medical certificate for so many days so that the medical council felt it was an act of recklessness or rashness so one week degree was suspended now what is criminal negligence criminal negligence is an act without having given any thought to the possibility of there being a such risk or having recognized that there was some risk involved had nevertheless gone to take part in this that means it should be such an gross act that even though he has not thought of he has gone for that act now doctor shows gross incompetency in selection and application of remedies in this case uh, i will give in best example there are reported case that the ophthalmologist while doing an cataract surgery on right means the the, the patient has an cataract of right eye but because of recklessness of that doctor he have operated on the opposite eye this is what falls under the category of criminal negligence now this is professional negligence negligence per se standard of care this we have all discussed now what is standard of care this is one of the landmark judgment with regards to standard of care this is bolams bolam versus free in hospital management committee now this bolam is something you know it is such a landmark that this bolam judgment is applied to nearly all the medical related complaint and evaluation of negligence or rashnesses now what is this this is a test of measuring the standard of ordinary skilled man exercising and professing to have that special skills man needs may not possess the highest expert skill now what this bolam judgment has said that a doctor may not possess the highest expert skill but undoubtedly he should have a reasonable skill with him so in india this is the supreme court again judgment is balkrishna joshi versus trimbappa bapu godpale this is from the state of maharashtra in supreme court is again related with the bolam test application now this is what it says doctor should exercise reasonable degree of care skill knowledge and must exercise reasonable degree of care then in either the very highest nor a very low degree of care and competence judged in the light of the particular circumstances in this case that means the supreme court has categorically said it is neither the very highest skill has to be applied nor a very lowest skill has to be applied for treating the patient now again this is one of the landmark judgment is poonam verma versus dr ashwin patil in 1997 we'll just go by the gist now it it gives a landmark judgment based on the act of omission what how the act of omission and omission should be measured now it says that the act of omission or commission which may be declared and treated as a negligence without any argument or proof as to the particular surrounding circumstances either because it is in the violation of a statute or valid municipal ordinance or because it is so palpably opposed to the dictates of the common prudence that it can be said without hesitation or doubt that no careful person would have been guilty of this in short i will tell you this is such an act which is done by the treating doctor that any common prudent man he may be a non doctor also will surely feel that there is no exercise of the care by a medical man this is what the punam verma judgment is related with 
application of act of omission and commission now this is negligence under con contract is vp shanta case this is one of the it says a professional man owes to his client a duty in tort as well as in contract to exercise a reasonable care in giving advice or performing services in short honorable supreme court in vp shanta case has has given and dictate i would say to medical profession itself that it is your duty means some professions or doctors may say ki i was ignorant of this that this level of care i should uh, practice when we treat any patient but vp shanta case has verdict has cleared that any professional man owes to his client a duty in the law of tort as well as in the contract contract to exercise reasonable care in giving advice or performing some procedures or this again we will just enumerate rajkot municipal corporation vs manjula ben jayanti bell in 1997 if claim depends on proof of contract action may not lie in the tort if the claim depends on proof of contract then action may not be may lie in the law of court tort also now this is something called as mens rea mens rea we all know for any conviction under any ipc this has to be proved mens rea it's literally means having a guilty mind while doing any act so what supreme court held that the criminal liability of a doctor was subject to latin maxis actus non facit rem nisi mens sit rea that is the act itself does not make an man guilty unless his intention was to do so that means even though there is a case of alleged negligence in against any doctor and it may be proved or it may be reasonably proved that the doctor was negligent in performing that procedure or an act but it has also to be proved that there was some intention there was some guilty mind there was some mens rea while doing that act if the mens rea while doing that act is not proved then the that doctor may not be criminally liable for that act so this is some you know such a good landmark judgment which even gives guidelines to the doctors which even uh, we can say dictates guidelines to the doctors and some protection is also given to the doctors now in professional negligence where is the proof of burden of proof yes it is the uh, accused is always innocent this is the principle of law we all know any accused is in innocent un until proven guilty and the prosecution must prove the case against him or her the patient bears the burden of the proof and must convince the court yes while doing this act the doctor was in a negligent per se also now there is a case or there is a uh, some condition what we say that is res is pa locator what it means it means fact speaks for itself in such cases it is the owners of the doctor to prove that he is not guilty now what are the cases under res is pa locator one example i have given instead of doing cataract on the affected right eye a ophthalmologist is operating a left eye so that fact speaks for itself so that in that case the doctor has to prove that yes i am not guilty of this offense but in other all other cases it is the complainant who should prove that the doctor is guilty in such alleged negligence now what doctor should do to prevent litigations first is awareness of potential areas of litigation and medical legal problem doctor himself should be aware first what are the litigations and what are the medical legal problem which is rarely seeing in any practicing doctors then he should always maintain good doctor patient relationship see this is the crux to prevent most of the medical litigations if any practitioner has a good relation with his patient patient will develop faith in that doctor and he will never move for litigation then he should always maintain standard medical service he should not decrease his medical services as per the given standards by the competent agency then he should properly counsel and take informed consent so informed consent and that to return informed consent is one of the major defense which is accepted by the honorable court if any allegation is made against the doctor then he should keep a meticulous record keeping now we can just enumerate what are the defenses against negligence for a doctor 
he may say i was not duty bound i have discharged duty as per the prevailing standards and informed consent was taken and he may also make an allegation patient was guilty of contributory negligence means what is contributory negligence that whatever advice is given by the patient the patient has not followed that advice so he has landed up in some damages there is some therapeutic misadventure there are some medical mal occurrences there may be error of judgment difference of opinion mistake of facts res judicata means this this uh, the act has been already punished by some other courts then this should not be sustained and doctor can well say there is absence of proof in such cases now some case laws this is very important i would say you know in supreme court has said in judgment december 2021 in spite of the treatment if the patient had not survived the doctors cannot be blamed as even the doctors with the best of their ability cannot prevent the inevitable that means every death of the patient cannot be on the face value means just by giving some prima facie look at the death of that patient to be considered as a case of medical negligence this is by and large nowadays seen in common society any death is presumed that it can be a negligence only which this judgment by honorable supreme court has clearly said every death of the patient cannot be considered as a medical negligence based on the face value itself they should provide adequate proof they should have a concrete opinion of any expert body to prove that now this is some kunal shah again landmark cases it says that uh, uh, saha then filed a criminal and civil case against the doctor and both the hospital on the ground they are grossly inappropriate in brief these were cases facts in which supreme court gave final verdict on this for the compensation around 6.8 crore see this is the maximum compensation given by any court in this country against any doctor so this is the landmark case 6 crores compensation was given to the uh, wife's date of this mr kunal shah now this is one again landmark case spring meadows now in this what what this uh, landmark judgment has said that it clearly said that uh, even though there is some negligence against treating any child and then what we say uh, when a young child was carried to a private hospital by parents and treated by doctors then not only just the child but the parent or also treated as a consumer under consumer protection act many a time doctor please and defends that yes if the child has been uh, there are damages on the child then that only should be covered under consumer protection act for uh, for compensation but it is not true by this judgment even the parent who has suffered a mental agony are also consumer under consumer protection act so if you have gone through the judgment of consumer protection maybe state body or national body they will always add an mental agony mental harassment of the patient as a component by virtue of which the compensation can be increased so thank you these are basic landmark judgment thank you for patient hearing uh, i have a very query what is see in case of a patient is admitted to a hospital and the treatment is done on the cashless you know treatment many a times the hospital does not release the documents or treatment documents for the even extended periods of sometimes in one one or two months so in that case how to actually get those documents if we are suspecting a case of medical negligence how to access because see most of the time they we get those documents for the uh, saying that this is a cashless treatment and we need this for the insurance claims so how to go about this in this case undoubtedly it may be a cashless or other any type of uh, the fees paid by any forum to this hospital or doctor they have no right to withhold any document the legal heir of that patient or the patient himself or herself can apply to that hospital and the hospital is duty bound to give the documents with attestation of competent authority within 72 hours as per the indian medical council act which is now the national medical commission act within 72 hours they have to provide they cannot give any reason that it is cashless or cash free or we are waiting for the payment from the tpas and all this it cannot be accepted if they are not providing within 3 days that patient or the legal heir of the patient 
can well complain for professional misconduct or unethical act to the state medical council or to the indian medical council which is now the national medical commission uh, sir uh, uh, for medical negligence when the opinion of a medical opinion is taken uh, it is seen that doctors help each other like uh, conviction rate is very low <laughs> now this you know it is just like a lawyer helps a lawyer uh, we can say a doctor helps a doctor but not all the <laughs> doctors are helping doctors now okay, sir. at my center i have given more than 100 opinions uh, which are against the doctor based on the merit of that case is not that i am opposing doctors but if i see anything on record if any indoor sheets are brought by investigating officer to me and if i see that they have not applied their proper reasonable care and slave and there is an obli- obvious act of negligence i can give you example one month before i did a pm in which uh, one of the doctors of uh, a good hospital performed you know medical termination of pregnancy that is a common procedure by any gynecologist and uh, uh, maybe incidentally we don't know they have punctured the uterus and there was heavy bleeding inside the abdomen which landed up in septicemic shock and that patient died we have to con- uh, doing pm we have opined directly also so not every doctor helps yes we may agree by and large uh, as the fraternity is same then uh, if you feel now in this nmc guidelines if you have seen that there is a provision of appeal also if some opinion is provided by any medical board or any doctor and if the patient relative legal heir or the advocate on behalf of that patient feels that this opinion provided by some committee is not appropriate or is not as per the standard guidelines then they can go in appeal for that also no there is a provision of an appeal also uh, sir actually i wanted to ask as you said earlier every doctor has the right to practice their knowledge in their respective field like uh, their not knowledge their pathy i said yeah like so allopathic, allopathic doctors yeah allopathic should yeah Ar- yeah, so, yeah 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 so like uh, sometimes a uh, misadventure happens like a uh, simple intramuscular injection can you know lead to cellulitis undoubtedly it and it's happen. a therapeutic misadventure yeah. but I, i was stating that uh, so, like a allopathic doctor uh, has that knowledge to give mm-hmm. that intramuscular injection of diclofenac let's say yeah but if that same medication is given by a homeopathy doctor in rural area where it's pretty common yeah it's always and, given even uh, and it patient uh, and a patient develops cellulitis so uh-huh. can he also take the defense of therapeutic misadventure or should he be prosecuted since he had no right to practice that to uh-huh. give that injection Now, what example you are giving hmm. is a common procedure like injection say hmm. which if you go through the uh, the teaching protocols of a bms or a bmh doctors hmm. they are trained in that hmm. Hmm? and hmm. after training they are certified hmm. by some competent university and hmm. degree is awarded by respective hmm. councils hmm. now that cannot be claimed hmm. Hmm? now i can give an example where it can be applied hmm. say uh, taken procedure of uh, taken i will give say incision and drainage you know common yes, procedure yes, there is some abscess a patient comes to a doctor saying that mm-hmm. i had an injury 15 days before uh, mm-hmm. i never contacted any doctor i have not taken any antibiotics and then it mm-hmm. has resulted in a, some bioma or some abscess mm-hmm. now that abscess if requires incision and drainage that is mm-hmm. a common procedure now this is not trained to any homeopathic doctor okay in their academic schedule in that four and a half years You know, if that is exercised by homeopathic or a unani doctor, mm. and after doing that act or procedure, if there are some damages mm. on the body, mm. maybe mental agony or a physic physical damage mm. on that patient, then undoubtedly he should be prosecuted. He or she, not only mm. should be prosecuted for that. What we say, you know, there is a Supreme Court judgment. It will say mm. that. <laughs> practicing cross pathy cross pathy mm. this is what you call mm. as cross pathy mm. is negligence per se now you are mm. a lawyer you can say what is meaning of negligence per se that mm. means there is no need to take a opinion in this yes what do you mean by term a legal term negligence per se 
it hmm. is obvious hmm. now you you may if you have gone through the rural area hmm. when i was practicing in phc say 97 98 99 that time i know that many bms doctor uh, uh, were conducting cesarean section also in rural yes. area yes so in that case if there is some damages to the patient hmm. then that is an act of negligence per se mm-hmm. yes, the police has to take an opinion or uh, take mm-hmm. a record on the fact <coughs> take a basic mm-hmm. opinion <coughs> and file an fir under 304a okay uh, even we can file 304a red with 201 202 that is act of commission and omission because mm-hmm. it an act of commission also mm-hmm. he is well aware that doctor that he should mm-hmm. not practice cross pathy even though he is doing mm-hmm. intentionally yes sir but so but sir but the injection like intramuscular injection is a part <laughs> of their uh, like syllabus yeah yeah that is a injection. common procedure uh, na, but uh, but the, the content i am talking about like the gentamicin diclofenac these are not part of their uh, medicines these are like allopathic medicines they no, are giving right yeah, that, that are allopathic medicine i agree now hmm. what has happened by and large initially there was a supreme court judgment which says this should not be done now yes. in last few years Mm. they have amended their uh, you know teaching protocol uh, mm. if you go through any degree take a law degree yes sir this any university will have a, a syllabus for that you know yes sir so they were amended take bms degree if you go through the syllabus nowadays of bms degree some 20% mod- modern medicine has been added mm. to that okay. so what they take a difference in this they will say this is what Uh, i have been taught through my four and a half years five years and mm. based on this <coughs> a competent university of government has provided me degree mm. okay okay sir thank you sir okay so can we take few more questions yeah, yeah. there are more participants <coughs> yes, next sir. participant sir my question was that sir with respect to um, uh, say for example there is a pathology doctor and the technician uh, commits a mistake like for example uh, uh, say an hiv sample was by mistake uh, switched with another patient or a wrong report was processed by him then so the technician is held responsible in this case or uh, would the pathologist who is employing that uh, technician would that technician uh, pathologist be responsible sir yes I, undoubtedly there is some law of doctrine called as vicarious liability have you heard of this yes sir that's right sir <coughs> vicarious liability yeah second hand liability it applies yes, to doctors also take i am head of the department of forensic now some pm is conducted under my supervision by some my junior doctor and maybe in that <coughs> there is some uh, allegation of negligence and which can be proved i am also partly responsible for that i cannot say that it is done by a junior doctor so i should not be held responsible so we carry liability can be applied in this uh, so there were two three questions the one is right to records uh, is records. that also applicable ha uh, is that also applicable in government hospitals because generally we see why not, when why not? We, see, generally when the patient gets discharged they do not provide us any kind of no, no, uh, no. papers they no no they, they, they just to, give us uh, sorry to interrupt see a suo moto record cannot be provided number one at the time of discharge what is minimum to be provided is a discharge card in which brief information of the treatment is provided now along with that diagnostic report see patient is paying for diagnostic report just like cbc ct scan usg that has to be provided but if you ask for detailed indoor sheets then they have to apply the patient or the legal has to apply and it applies to government hospitals also the 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 uh, what instructions given by national medical council or indian medical council applies equally to private hospitals as well as to the government hospitals okay thank you sir so second question the consent yeah. what you mentioned was 12 years so generally in our criminal matters or in the normal course of law it is 18 years So yeah. here it is twelve years always for consent. No, no, no. I will give an uh, I will give you an explanation to this. See, twelve years and above consent can be given. Now, which consent? It is only when there is only physical examination of body of that individual. Then only between twelve to eighteen years can be consent can be provided. If 
just like I take an example, uh, say we regularly do here FOXO cases examination. Now in FOXO cases examination, we have to examine that child because FOXO cases examination is always under 18 years of age, right? So in that, we take consent if that child is more than 12 years but less than 18 years, we take consent of uh, that child also as well as the consent of the legal guardian. Because in examination of the FOXO cases, we do not only do physical examination. Along with that, we also assess the mental capacity, the cognitive behavior, the orientation of that subject. If this complete examination is done, then 18 years and above. If only physical examination is to be done, then about 12 years can provide a valid consent. Understood, sir. Yeah. And the last question, that was a professional indemnity. Like sometimes, yes. nowadays, like it has been, like most of the doctors go for this. Mm. So sometimes when the case is already damaged, mm -hmm. then there are some kind of, you know, afterthoughts, like some proper uh, procedure is not followed, like making of some sheets, writing of some papers, signing of something, which they then help. So can we also blame uh, the company who are providing such uh, help uh, after the case is damaged so that to cover up the doctor so that he will not be held liable in the courts? See, what is medical indemnity basically? Some agency is taking a consulting. It is just like lawyer is advising some client. They, it is just like an insurance only that a doctor has to pay something. And if some allegation is done against him or her, that company, if at all convicted for compensation, will pay that fee. That is simple thing. Now, no one has to, even that indemnity company has a right to change the document or distort any type of document which the treating doctor has made. And if doctor is a part of that, then you can go for another criminal complaint of forging the document or fraudulent act on part of the indemnity company or the treating doctor also. Thank you, sir. Anything more in this? See, indemnity, no, you know, basically is a newer concept 10 years before I think I have started. It is just like, you know, insurance company, doctor has to pay some premium against which they are secured for some amount. And if there was some allegation is made and if the doctor uh, against doctor that consumer uh, act says that X amount is to be given on behalf of doctor, this insurance company is paying. This is simple. Okay. Sir, uh, suppose the patient has suffered damages before two years and so now he can file a suit against him? Why not? See, there is something limitation in Consumer Protection Act of two years. But okay. in that it has been said, even though the limitation period has uh, passed away, if okay. there is a reasonable justification of delay, okay. then he can file. Okay. So he has to provide a reasonable. Uh, yeah, yeah, he has reason. to provide a reason. So, uh, sir, and what all evidence he have to means uh, submit? Submit. Uh, which evidences? Means like what all evidence he have to means uh, submit to the in uh, court. For negligence. Yeah, negligence. Only he damages. To, no, he has to provide indoor paper. Okay. And he has to provide a credible opinion from competent authority that this medical board has opined that the, the treatment falls under ambit of negligence by that doctor. Okay. Not more than that. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me.